praise belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Lord of the worlds, the one and only true God, the most compassionate, the merciful. There is nothing like him whatsoever, yet he is the all-hearing and the all-seeing. And peace and blessings be upon our master Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the final messenger of God, the seal of the prophets, the commander of the righteous, the leader of the messengers, and beloved of the Lord of the worlds. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, قُلْ صَدَقَ اللَّهُ فَاتَّبِعُوا مِلَّةِ إِبْرَاهِيمَ حَنِيفًا وَمَا كَانَ مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ Say, God speaks the truth. Follow the creed of Abraham, the quintessential monotheist. He was not an idol worshiper. As you know, this Eid is tied to the pilgrimage, the Hajj, and our master Ibrahim alayhi salam. And Ibrahim alayhi salam is revered as a great patriarch of all three major religions, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. He's called the friend of God in the Hebrew Bible, the New Testament, and the Quran. And yet there are significant differences between the sacred historical narratives of the Bible and biblical tradition and those of the Quran and Muslim tradition. So I thought that this morning I would highlight some of those similarities as well as some key differences and to maybe explore the significance of these differences between our tradition and the so-called Judeo-Christian tradition. According to our sacred historical narrative, our master Ibrahim alayhi salam traveled to the Arabian Peninsula with his eldest son Ismail alayhi salam. And both Walid and Walad, both father and son, built the walls of the Kaaba in Mecca. The Qawaid, the foundations of which were laid down by our master Adam alayhi salam, the first human being. This is sort of like the origin story of our deen, so to speak. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, La uqsumu bihad al balad. I swear by this city, meaning Mecca, wa anta hidun bihad al balad. And you are free men in this city. Wa walidin wa ma walad. Laqad khalaqna al insana fi kabar. And by the father, the walid, and what he has begotten, ma walada. Truly mankind is in constant struggle. Imam Fakhruddin al Razi, rahimahullah ta'ala, he said that the Walid here is Ibrahim alayhi salam and Ma Walada is Ismail alayhi salam and his progeny. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is taking an oath by Ibrahim and Ismail alayhi salam. These two great ancestors of the Arabs. And of course this was something that was known among the Arabs that they were descendants of Ibrahim alayhi salam through Ismail alayhi salam. This is what gave this oath such potency when the Quraysh first heard it uh, in Mecca. In Al-Bukhari, we are we told that the Mushrikeen placed an icon of Ibrahim and Ismail salam, inside the Kaaba. And the Prophet وسلم, ordered it to be removed at the conquest. So they knew their lineage. They were proud of their lineage. Now according to our narrative, in more ancient times, Mecca was known as Becca. Imam al who was a master philologist, he said that in some dialects of Arabic, the Meme and the Ba are sometimes interchanged. In its origin, the word Becca seems to be related to the Arabic and Hebrew root word meaning to cry or to weep. So the original name of Mecca meant something like the weeping valley. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Inna awwala baytin wudi'ali nasi lalladibi bakkata mubaraka wuhudan lil alameen. Indeed, the first house ever founded for humanity, for the worship of the one true God, was at Becca, the blessed, a guide for all people. فِيهِ آيَاتٌ بَيِّنَاتٌ مَقَامُ إِبْرَاهِيمٌ وَمَنْ دَخَلُوا كَانَ آمِنًا وَلِلَّهِ عَلَى النَّاسِ حِجُّ الْبَيْتِ مَنْ اسْتَتَعَ عَلَيْهِ سَبِيلًا وَمَنْ كَفَرَ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ غَنِيٌ عَلِ الْعَالَمِينَ In it are clear signs and the standing place of Abraham. Whoever enters it should be safe. Pilgrimage to this house is an obligation by God upon whoever is able among the people. And whoever disbelieves, surely Allah is not in need of any of his creation. So it was in this weeping valley of Becca that Ismail alayhi salam, as a very young child, cried for water, while his mother, as Sayyidah Hajar alayhi salam, ran frantically between two hills, Safa and Marwa, in search of water to give to her son. Eventually, a blessed spring was given to her by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the water of Zamzam, water that flows to this day. The name Hajar is pronounced Hagar in English from the Hebrew Hagar in the Torah, and is related to the Arabic word Hijra meaning flight or migration. It was Hagar and her son Ishmael, peace be upon them, who migrated from Canaan to the Meccan Valley by order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the hadith, we are told that Hajar alayhi salam said, O oh Abraham, are you leaving us in a barren valley? And she repeated this many times. And Ibrahim alayhi salam did not answer her. And then she said, Allahu ladhi amaraka bihada, did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala order you to do this? 
Qala na'am. And Ibrahim alayhi salam, he said yes. And then she said, Allah will never neglect us. Subhanallah. Imagine how difficult this was for her. This was a great, great woman. Look at the faith, the iman, the taqwa, the tawakkul, the taslim, the shaja'a. We live in a society now where people cannot even define what a woman is anymore. Language and meaning are seriously breaking down. We don't have that problem. This is a woman, a Sayyidah Haja alayhi salam. She was a princess of Egypt who gave her life to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, living in a barren desert. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made her the matriarch of our deen and the ancestor of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Now this is a major difference of opinion we have with biblical tradition with Jews and Christians. In Genesis, in the Torah, in the Bible, we were told that Sarah, the second wife of Abraham, banished Hagar and Ishmael into the desert and that this happened on the day of Isaac's weaning. Now in Jewish law, a baby is weaned for three years. So this would have made Isaac three years old when this happened. However, Genesis also says that Ishmael was 14 years older than Isaac. So this would have made Ishmael 17 years old when he was quote unquote banished into the desert, the same age as Joseph, according to Genesis, Genesis when he was thrown into a well by his brothers, a young adult. But if you read that narrative in Genesis 21 of Hagar and Ishmael in the desert, Ishmael is clearly described as a baby or a toddler who cries and is picked up by his mother in her arms. You see, subhanAllah, the deception of the editors of the text is unveiled. The scribe or scribes or the editors who put these stories together in the Torah not only manufactured certain texts, but they manipulated the chronology of certain events, and certain narratives in order to discredit certain individuals that they did not like. In this case, Hajar alayhi salam and Ismail alayhi salam. Ismail was a child at the time. That's the truth. The Prophet وسلم, said, Akbar Ibrahim bi Ismail wa ummihi alayhi salam wa hiya turdirhu. That, that Ibrahim alayhi salam, he left Hajar and Ismail in the desert and, he, and, and she was nursing him. She was nursing Ismail. So this inconsistency in the chronology of the biblical narrative proves that it is impossible for Hagar and Ishmael to have been banished on the day of Isaac's weaning. Isaac, peace be upon him, Ishaq alayhi salam, had nothing to do with this. Isaac would not be born for another several years. The editors inserted Isaac into the story because they wanted to elevate Isaac over Ishmael for tribal reasons. In other words, the real reason why Hajar alayhi salam and Ismail alayhi salam are in the desert is not mentioned by the biblical editors or it was buried by them. It was concealed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Yuharrifuna kalima amma wadi'i that biblical scribes, they shifted words out of their proper context. In other words, they decontextualize their text to give false impressions. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَا تَلْبِسُوا الْحَقَّ بِالْبَاتِلِ وَتَقْتِمُوا الْحَقَّ وَأَنْتُمْ تَعْلَمُونَ Do not mix truth with falsehood, nor conceal the truth knowingly. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يَا أَهْلَ الْكِتَابِ قَدْ جَاءَكُمْ رَسُولُنَا يُبَيْنُ لَكُمْ كَثِيرًا مِمَّا كُنْتُمْ تُخْفُونَ مِنَ الْكِتَابِ وَيَعْفُ عَنْ كَثِيرًا O people of the book, indeed our messenger has come unto you, exposing much of what you used to conceal in the Bible and forgiving much. There has come unto you a light and a clarifying scripture. The light is the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and the scripture is the Quran. Almost all modern biblical historians agree with the Quran here. The five books that Jews and Christians today attribute to Musa السلام, were in fact assembled about a thousand years after Moses by a group of editors who stitched together different versions of laws and narratives attributed to Musa السلام, and in effect created the overall uh, chronology of the Torah as we have it. This is called the documentary hypothesis and it remains the most widely accepted source criticism of the Torah in the Western Academy. But even with this said, there are certainly kernels of truth here and there that have survived the passage of time, that have survived the pens of the editors, and have in fact, maybe, maybe have in fact originated with Musa alayhi salam. There are certain things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserved in the Torah. Therefore the Quran presents itself as both a confirmation, a musaddiq of biblical tradition, as well as a corrective. The Quran is Al-Furqan. The Quran is Muhaymin alayhi. In Muslim understanding, some of the ancient Israelites, the Bani Israel, 
who were the Muslim Ummah at that time. They were the Muslim Ummah. It seems that some of them considered the Kaaba in ancient Mecca to be one of the outlying tabernacles or sacred houses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that they would visit while making pilgrimage to Jerusalem. There seems to have been an awareness, at least in some circles, of Abraham's uh, connection to ancient Mecca. These were probably people living in Yemen who converted to the religion of Sulaiman alayhi salam. So I was saying these are probably people, in, people living in Yemen who converted to the religion of Sulaiman alayhi salam. For Abrahamic monotheism, when Bilqis, the queen of Saba, became a believer. So they would make Hajj from Yemen to Jerusalem, from Yemen to Beit al-Maqdis, and pass through Becca on their way. Psalm 84 in the Tanakh describes the journey of a group of pilgrims traveling to Jerusalem who passed through, quote, the Emek Habaka, the valley of Becca, the weeping valley, and made it into a well. Now, we are told in the Quran that after Ibrahim السلام, and Ismail السلام, raised up the foundations of the Kaaba, they supplicated to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, O oh, our Lord, accept this from us. You are indeed the all hearing, the all knowing. O oh, our Lord, make us both fully submit to you, and from our descendants a nation that will submit to you. Show us our rites and rituals and turn to us in grace. You are truly the acceptor of repentance, the most merciful. We are further told in the Quran that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to humanity, and remember when we assigned to Abraham the site of the house, saying, do not associate anything with me in worship and purify my house for those who circle it, stand in prayer therein and bow and prostrate themselves and announce the pilgrimage to all mankind. They will come to you on foot and on every lean mount and they will come from every distant pathway so they may obtain the benefits in store for them and pronounce the name of God on appointed days over the sacrificial animals he has provided for them. So eat from the meat and uh, from their meat and feed the desperately poor and let them end their untidiness and let them fulfill their vows and let them circumambulate the ancient house. Surah Al-Hajj verses 26 to 29. So we can see from the Quranic narrative that the pilgrimage to Mecca, the Hajj, with its rites and rituals has its origin in none other than Abraham, peace be upon him. However, over time, the descendants of Ismail alayhi salam in that region, the Arabs began to fall away from the pure Abrahamic monotheism, the Tawheed Ibrahimiya. And eventually the Kaaba was filled with hundreds of idols that the Arabs would pray to as intercessors between them and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because they deemed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala too majestic to call upon directly. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is majestic. He is Dhul Jalali wa Ikram. Yet he's also personal, meaning that we can call upon him directly. Call upon me and I'll answer you. Now, according to the Quran, there was one more thing that Ibrahim alayhi salam and Ismail alayhi salam prayed for at the Kaaba. They said, Rabbana wab'ath fihim rasulan minhum yatlu alayhim ayatika wa yu'allimuhum al-kitabu wal-hikmah wa yuzakihim inna ka anta al-aziz al-hakim. O our Lord, raise from among them a messenger who will recite to them your revelations, teach them the book and wisdom and purify them. Indeed, you alone are the Almighty, the wise. This prayer of Ibrahim alayhi salam and Ismail alayhi salam was answered by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he raised the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam in Mecca as a universal messenger, as rahmatan lil alameen. In fact, the name Ismail in Hebrew, Ishmael, means God will hear or answer. And so his prayer was answered by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam is the prophet of the Abrahamic restoration. This is very important. He put humanity back upon the millah of Ibrahim alayhi salam. The Quran says, in the Quran says, in awla nasi bi Ibrahim al-ladina tabu'u wa hadha al-nabiyu wal-ladina amanu wallahu wali al-mu'mineen. Indeed, the closest of humanity to Abraham are those who follow him, as are this Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam and the Muslims, those who believe in God as the protector of those who have faith. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam was the greatest monotheist in the history of the world. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam recited the, to humanity the Quran, God's final revelation. He taught us the meanings of scripture by his speech and actions. And like his ancestor Ibrahim alayhi salam, his theological teachings purified humanity of both explicit and, and subtle idolatry. Now this Muslim tradition of Ibrahim and Ismail building the Kaaba in Mecca, this is not mentioned in the book of, of Genesis and the Torah. It's not mentioned in traditions of Jews and Christians. And the Jews and Christians say if these things really happened, Musa alayhi salam would have mentioned them in the Torah. And this is my response to this. And before I give the response, I want to make something clear that, that we believe as Muslims that Islam, 
that the religion brought by the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, is Deen al Haq. It is religion of truth with a capital T. We have much in common with other religions. This is true, but there are also key differences. And these differences are actually what make our deen unique. It's easy to say that all religions are essentially the same and that details don't really matter. That is doing a disservice to humanity. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strengthen our iman with knowledge. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us a means of guidance and not a, a hindrance to guidance. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfir Allah li wa lakum fa astaghfiru innahu huwa al-ghafur rahim Tubu ila Allah ya tawabu alayhi Alhamdulillah wa al-alameen Salatu wa salam ala rasulillah al-mustafa wa ala sadatina wa himmatina Abi Bakr Umar Uthman wa Ali wa radiyallahu ta'ala an ashabi rasulillahi ajma'een Nakoolu Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fi kitab al-aziz Fa'ada nakoolu awudu billahi min ash-shaytan al-rajim Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusallu la'ala al-Nabi Ya ayuhal ladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima Allahumma salli ala sayyidu Muhammad wa ala ala sayyidu Muhammad كما صليت على سيد إبراهيم وعلى آل سيد إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على سيد محمد وعلى آل سيد محمد كما باركت على سيد إبراهيم وعلى آل سيد إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد نشهد أن لا إله إلا الله نستغفر الله نسألك الجنة ونعوذ بك من النار نشهد أن لا إله إلا الله نستغفر الله نسألك الجنة ونعوذ بك من النار نشهد أن لا إله إلا الله نستغفر الله نسألك الجنة ونعوذ بك من النار اللهم إنك عفو إنك اللهم إنك عفو تحب العفو فاعف عنا اللهم إنك عفو تحب العفو فاعف عنا اللهم إنك عفو تحب العفو فاعف عنا يا كريم صلى الله عليه وسلم محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم الحمد لله رب العالمين just one last thing it's واجب amongst the Hanafis to do the takbirat after the fard salawat immediately after the the fard recite the takbirat inshallah ta'ala for men it's a sunnah to be audible and for women it's a sunnah to be to do it uh, quiet um, and you'll do this until asr prayer on the 13th of the hijjah which i believe is asr on tuesday inshallah ta'ala and fasting is there's no fasting on the, on the following three days inshallah ta'ala